Welcome, Age of Vintage Society. Beauty and glamorous look are among her trademarks. She is remarkable with her British gorgeousness and is among the sexiest English women of her time. Joan Collins is one actress whose colourful and successful career remained modest, owing to her spirited travail through enduring moments that saw her hit the front pages of the press. Referred for her exceptional role as a dynasty star, this movie icon has a few relationship complications that appear to have immersed her personality, but not her true nature. How Joan Collins and John Forsyth's feud went too far. Make sure to watch the video until the end and leave your thoughts in the comments. If you are new here, join our wonderful community by subscribing to the Age of Vintage channel. Joan Collins has had a long and exceptionally celebrated movie career that began sometime in 1946, when she was just 17 years old. Over the years, she has continued to enjoy a glamorous career with her famous sister, Jackie Collins. With three children, five husbands and four divorces, this English talent surely has a lot to be cheerful for. A life worthy of commendation, one would say, of this energetic and highly focused lady. Her manoeuvring within the entertainment circle all through the years did not just define her true personality, but is now part of her memorable moments. Though admirably distinguished for her performance in the television series Dynasty, Joan has worked so hard as an actress, appearing regularly in films, with more than 70 film roles to her credit and several TV shows. Fans of Broadway and the West End production also felt her talent, plus her glamorous tours with various theatre groups. Critics described her character in her career-defining role in Dynasty as conniving, glamorous, nasty and witty, as everyone saw her brilliantly take the personality of Alexis Carrington Colby, making the series a huge success all through the 1980s. Joan was nominated six times for a Golden Globe Award because of this stunning outing and had a Primetime Emmy nomination. She also won many soap opera digest recognitions, including one for an outstanding anti-hero. Collins, who arrived in Hollywood as a single lady, was said to have dated several men before opening a passionate romance with Warren Beatty, a man who was not popular at the time. He put her in a family way that she was not prepared for, leading to a compulsory abortion so she can continue her stint. Several years down the line, Collins says no regrets about doing the needful. While fans enjoyed Joan Collins's character for keeping the Dynasty show alive with her recurring hostility with Linda Evans, who represented Crystal Carrington, the famous pond fight appeared more natural than just film acting for some reasons. Even as the two and other co-stars were said to have taken the movie feud off-screen in a real-time dramatic twist of hatred that seemingly may have lasted for a time too long. The issues that play out behind the scene in this epic production remained a secret until the actors themselves, including Joan Collins, decided to tell their story in what was described as Hollywood's most vicious feuds. Joan Collins spoke about this age-long vendetta, especially with John Forsyth and Linda Evans, after joining the series and noticeably changing the fortune of the show. She stated that for several years a lot of people sought to know about what their issues were, but she had always denied having any problem with anybody. Unfortunately, that is not the truth, because from the moment she joined the show, the people she was acting with made her feel unwelcome. Forsyth was the one making things difficult, she had said. Forsyth, who died sometime in 2010 when he turned 92, was said to have also hinted about his relationship with Collins, and how things were not as smooth as they should have been. Before her Alexis Colby fame, Joan had starred with the likes of Betty Davis and Paul Newman, as she gradually built her personality. With a few personal ups and downs, she did not only overcome, but still lived to tell her stories. Did Joan Collins also disagree with her sister, Jackie Collins, at a point in their career? Dame Joan Henrietta Collins, DBE, was born on the 23rd of May 1933 in Paddington, London. Her parents, Elsa Collins, a dance instructor, and Joseph William Collins, a talent agent from South Africa, 
who worked with the likes of Shirley Bassey, The Beatles and Tom Jones. Joan grew up in Maida Vale under the close guidance of her British mother and was trained as an actress as a teenager at the Royal Academy of Dramatic Art. Among her two younger siblings is Jackie Collins, a renowned novelist. Joan was schooled at the Francis Holland School, an autonomous day school for females in London. Collins' earlier stage appearance was in the Henrik Ibsen play A Doll's House when she was nine years old. This was before she commenced her acting training at the age of 16. A year after, she signed a contract with the Rank Organisation, a British movie studio, where she later appeared in several British films. Collins made her debut as a movie extra, appearing as a beauty contestant in Lady Godiva Rides Again in 1951, a film that also featured Diana Dawes. She then appeared in The Woman's Angle in 1952, where she acted a small role as a Greek maid, before making a significant show as a mobster's mole in Judgment Deferred of 1952. Collins' initial breakthrough role that gave her enough publicity came when she played a key character as a young criminal in I Believe in You, also in 1952. The much-publicised successful display positioned her for fame as the media christened her the Britain's Bad Girl. While still with rank, she took part in other films like The Cameron Knights with Joan Fontaine, which became England's first ex-licensed drama, Kosh Boy, Turn the Key Softly and The Square Ring, all in 1953. Hollywood director Howard Hawks picked Collins in 1954 to star as the conniving Princess Nellifer in what became her first international movie, Land of the Pharaohs. The extravagant Warner Brothers' ancient classic did not make much, though, was applauded. At this time, Joan Collins was becoming popular with her criminal-minded roles, as studios continued to field her in a related role. Her excellent performances in those roles may have convinced Daryl Zanuck of 20th Century Fox to put her on his payroll as she was signed to a seven-year contract, this time for the Hollywood studio. Under the Fox studio in 1955, Collins starred as Evelyn Nesbitt in The Girl in the Red Velvet Swing, as Elizabeth Rayleigh in The Virgin Queen, and in many other films before she decided to terminate the contract. MGM rented Collins for a role in The Opposite Sex before she starred in Ireland in the Sun in 1957, which became a major box office success and was said to have earned $5,550,000 globally, reaching the sixth highest grossing film of 1957. She went to London in 1961 to star opposite Bing Crosby and Bob Hope in The Road to Hong Kong in 1962, and a few other films including in the US, as she was now a recognised international film star. Soon Collins shifted her interest towards television shows and made her first TV dramatic career as a guest performer in The Human Jungle followed by Run For Your Life and many others. At this time, her lengthy and ever-busy schedule was shuffling her between British and American movies. Collins got another successful outing that put her back in the spotlight when she starred in a movie adaptation of her sister's novel, Jackie Collins's The Stud. During the period, she also printed her autobiography, Past Imperfect, which stood at number one in the bestseller charts at some point. Sometime in 1981, Collins was invited to join the second season of the series known as Dynasty, which aired from that year till 1989. She later appeared as Alexis Colby, the resentful ex-wife of a character known as Blake Carrington, played by John Forsyth. Dynasty gave her an enormous success that she continues to celebrate. By 1985, the show became topmost in the United States over CBS rival Dallas, which dropped to the second spot. After six consecutive nominations, she took home the Golden Globe Award. In her epic acceptance speech at the award-giving ceremony, Collins joyfully thanked Sophia Loren for relinquishing the role. Significantly, Collins was credited for turning around the fate of the Dynasty show because its popularity was dwindling before she joined the set, and Nielsen ratings about it went up thereafter. That same 1983, Collins got her star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame for career success. Confirming her laudable contribution, ex-ABC administrator Ted Harbert noted, We didn't believe that we had this thing done as a hit until Joan Collins walked down that courtroom aisle. 
Co-star Al Cawley described it as Collins flying in and the show flying high. But while the accolades and encomiums were being showered on this dogged talent, fans and regular viewers of the programme did not know about the infighting that was ongoing throughout the season between Joan Collins and those she shouldn't be in enmity with. Was it jealousy, personal choice or something best known to them? Collins and co-star Forsyth had dissension that also affected her relationship with another co-star, Linda Evans. On what may have led to the malice, Collins explained what she felt was the issue. She supposed that Forsyth never liked her for some reasons, one of which she identified as the concept of ageism. She clarified that the press never disclosed Forsyth's age, but had always mentioned that Collins was in her 40s and Linda was in her 30s, even as Forsyth was 62. A kind of media report that always highlighted the ages of women, the older women and the younger women, and that she had brought the matter up in interviews because she hates the ageist people. And that Forsyth didn't fancy her idea and would later query her saying, why do you have to mention my age? She had replied, because ours is mentioned, that is equality. She also pointed out that Forsyth is the type that is always seeking to be the centre of attention, another reason he hated her. She recalled a scene that played out when the show won a People's Choice Award and how they were told by Publicity Unity that Forsyth would receive the award on behalf of the team. But when it was given to her, she had made a short appreciatory remark before handing it over to him, to which Forsyth said, She said enough, and left. Thereafter, as Collins noted, Forsyth didn't converse with her throughout the entire season of Dynasty, she also spoke about a scene in the movie where he was supposed to try and strangle her and that she was very apprehensive that she had wanted a position where she can defend herself in case he overdid it. I have to have my stand in because I'm scared, Collins recalled jokingly. She also accused Forsyth of being a misogynist. I didn't like him because he was a misogynist, she had said, adding that he reflected the same in his contract where he always had to get an extra $5,000 from every episode that others don't have and that he placed himself in front of every publicity about the show. She felt it was misogynistic to allow this to happen. To buttress how Forsyth wanted to dominate everything, she said he had his image twice on Dynasty DVD. I don't know if you've seen the DVDs. His picture is twice as big as anybody else's, even though Linda and I were important, including wanting more lines for himself than anybody, Collins stated. More worrisome, according to Collins, is that the hatred she experienced may have also come from some of the other members of the cast. Perhaps they were not so happy working with her or something. She hinted how some persons had sympathised with her, with some asking questions all the time about how she was coping, some will tell her, hey, they bloody hated you, Joan. Why one cannot ascertain the actual issue that may have resulted in the resentment, Collins didn't ignore the fact that she is an English actress who suddenly joined the cast and is taking all the glory, because the media is already saying this English woman comes in and saves the show. So funny that they never got over their differences 40 years after, as Collins still felt what she described as an antipathy towards me when the team gathered recently for a dynasty reunion. When Forsyth was confronted with a question about the grudge with Collins, he did not deny it, though he was diplomatic about his response. It was obvious he did not prefer her as a scene co-worker. She's a very talented, very charismatic, he had said, but noted that he had a better relationship with Linda Evans. It was the easier, calmer, more receptive pairing, I was more comfortable with Linda than I was with Joan, he declared. Expectedly, the feud extended to Linda, as Collins recalled the very first scene with Linda where she got angry, and she had to shout at her. So who do you think you are? Collins noted that during rehearsal. She was soft, but in actual shooting, she went very tough on her as part of the acting and watched Linda visibly shrink to a corner, after which she came to her and said, Oh my God, that was so real, did you mean it? To which she responded, Linda, it's called acting. But unfortunately she took it personally and never liked her. And so while the audience was enjoying the performances and praising the cast for their actions, it does appear that they may have been acting out their true emotions. Who cares as long as the awards and the money is coming in? The bitter truth about the entertainment industry. 
The rumours about a possible crack between Collins and her sister Jackie, as the two sisters sought fame simultaneously, may have existed. Jackie was said to have admitted feeling inferior to her elder sister as an adolescent. Information in the late Jackie Collins' diaries show painful stories of Jackie's great effort before she had a career breakthrough and how she was trading under Joan's shadow just to find her own identity in the industry. About family life, Joan Collins' first marriage with Maxwell Reed ended in 1956. She married Anthony Newley in a union that produced two children, Tara and Alexander, before her union with Ron Cass in 1972, which also produced a daughter. When that one ended in 1983, she moved on to Peter Holm in 1985, but that too divorced in 1987. She married again to her last husband, Percy Gibson, who is 31 years younger. If you liked this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you're new here, and if you want to support my work, please visit my Patreon page. You must have noticed that nothing is what it seems in Hollywood. Why Jerry Lewis and Dean Martin's legendary split left open wounds? Watch this video and find out.